Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at, well, a, a comparison between the Pavo Pico, I've also heard it pronounced Pico, um, so Pico, Pico, Pavo, this one over here, and the Mobula 8 HD. Kind of dramatically different design quads, but this will just be a comparison because uh, several people asked for it. Uh, if you want to see the full review of each individual quad, I have links down in the video description to my original reviews uh, where you can also find purchase links if you want to go that particular route. This took me a little longer than I had originally planned because pretty much the day after I posted my Mobula 8 video where I had mentioned doing a comparison, I started flying it, trying to get that slow, cruisy, smooth flight, try to get one of those low wind days, which doesn't happen much around here. But I kept trying, morning before work, noon, lunch hour, from work, after work, maybe even late evening. Really didn't get a real good one that I would want to show you. So what I've done instead, and we'll get to that. I'm kind of uh, teasing you, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to describe um, what we're going to be seeing later on in this video. I did uh, circles for two full battery packs, morning, noon, and evening on two days. And then I went through and I picked the best path on the same day. So within just a few minutes, flights of each other. So to get dramatically different days. And I just pulled out one circle. So that's those that are looking for jello. I think you'll find it in both of these outside in full sun in most wind cases. There are moments in that video where it's still. I'm kind of spoiling things, but when it comes to handling wind, neither are great at it. Uh, this Pavo Pico Pico does have the benefit of being able to take off the prop guard and fly it without the prop guard. And that may be a best option for flying it outside and getting smooth video. Of course, the Mobula 8 does not have that as an option because the, the whoop protection is integral to the entirety of the quad. So let's start off with uh, what might be a cardinal sin. I'm told on the internet that if you do FPV or quadcopter reviews and you do not have flight audio, that that is lazy. But I'm going to have to ask for some forgiveness because I have either misplaced, didn't record, or otherwise our first little section of video that we'll look at, which is the Pavo Pico inside the house. Uh, I don't think we need to watch a terrible lot of inside footage, but in case, you know, I don't want to leave anyone out and anyone's concerns, although it's inevitable that there'll be someone that was that has a use case scenario that I won't be able to squeeze in into the uh, a video. So we're going to look at a lot of different samples. Uh, I wanted to do it inside in full sunlight as well because full sunlight draws out the jello and I'm playing it full screen. That way you can see, you know, put your face right up against whatever you're viewing uh, monitor screen and what have you is to see if there's any particular jello that you can see. I don't see it, so, and I don't see it in either case. Uh, so if we're putting these head to head, not in some sort of macho way, but just trying to compare them in a way that, so you can make choices about which bet suits what you want uh, these particular quads, if you want either one of these quads, and how it will respond for what you're wanting it to do. Okay, that's about a minute of the Pavo Pico. Let's jump over to the Mobile 8. Again, slow inside and no flight audio. And as you can tell, I am doing all these flights with quick succession on the same day. That was very important to me and my testing. You'll see that my daughter sitting there at the uh, table is wearing the same shirt and the same hairstyle and the same clothes and everything else, probably playing the same game. Uh, what is the name of that game that she plays? Sard I might be pronouncing this wrong. Sardu Valley? It reminds me of a game that I might have played back when I was in high school when Nintendo first came out. Um, kind of uh, a two-dimensional sort of game. Uh, maybe they call those side-scrollers. I'm not certain. I don't play a lot of video games and haven't in a long, long time. But anyways, I uh, wanted to show you another minute footage of the Mobula 8, and then we'll do our comparison, our side-by-side, -side, which of course will have two smaller uh, viewing panels. And these are those viewing panels. Now, of course, getting these synced up, I used my daughter as a sync point, but of course I'm not flying the exact same speed at the exact same time. And we'll find this as a kind of a, a, a through or a, a through line with the entirety of this video is that I'm trying to do comparisons, but I can't sync the entirety up of the video or I'm end up speeding stuff up and slowing stuff down. And that can impact how it's viewed as well. Uh, that can hide jello or that can produce jello or accentuate jello or micro vibrations within the video footage, however you want to see it. Obviously, I've got the OSD on screen, so this is straight out of the goggles. No uh, Rocksteady or EIS is a part of this. But I did want to show you a sample through the house on the same day. Uh, so these are the same flights as I showed you full screen. So we don't have to worry about 
me and different days on these particular flights. This is just so that you can get a side by side and then another minute of viewing pleasure for that. But we're going to pop outside and do our next bit outside in full bright sunlight. Okay, I'm already rolling. I'm just going to do one pass here. It's only about 35 seconds. And one of the things that I did do in this particular section for outside when I do the comparison is I do sync time them after I show you the plain view without them synchronized. So synchronized and then I am going to show them to you where they're, or excuse me, unsynchronized. So one will finish before the other when I do the side by side comparison and then we'll do another one that is synchronized. So they'll be finishing at the same time. Hopefully you were following along. That was the Pavo Pico first and now we've rolled right into the Mobula 8 with the O3. Uh, this one takes a little longer to go around. I don't know if it's just because uh, wind direction or the fact that the prop protection is a little bit more substantial, so I have to push against that more. But it's probably just the fact that uh, camera angle, yeah. Uh, you can see the hoops in view, that's important to note, but you can move it up a notch on the mount and it won't show the hoops, hoops in view. I shouldn't, uh, that depends on your camera angle. So if you go negative camera angle, yeah, you're pointing the camera down at the hoops. But if you move up, and I'll show you this when we get back to the desk as well, but uh, that's two circles around. Now let's do the comparison. And this is that same path, and we're going to make our circles, and these will not sync up because of the differences in speed. Obviously, I've already passed the tree on the left, and I just, well, I've passed the tree in both cases now. But um, So we've got the Mobula 8, if you can't see that very clearly on the left, and we've got the Pablo Pico on the right. And we're making a full circular path around, and then we'll come back and we'll do it unsynchronized as well. Of course, the video in both cases is gonna run about 40 seconds. You see there the Pavo Pico finished first, so he wins the race, right? So he's the big winner. No, 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 he just happened to be flying a little bit faster. And the Mobula 8 has now finished up, so we can move on to the side-by-side -side synchronized comparison to where I try to sync these up as close as I can at the start. And then I do the uh, time and speed duration that Adobe Premiere offers in order to speed up the slower of the two, which is the Mobila 8. So the Mobila 8, if you're watching the clock, is probably running a tick or two fast. That's as expected to try to get the footage to sync up as much as possible for uh, a secondary, thirdary, tertiary view. Just trying to be thorough, so... I can try to make as many people happy as I can. Okay, so if you've left the video, which I presume because I'm talking to you, you haven't. Now it's kind of my favorite part. It's where we're gonna compare performance and I was a little bit surprised by the Pavo Pico. I didn't fly it inside, as I mentioned in my other videos. I wasn't gonna try to go fast inside. We go faster outside. I think this is kind of shocking. So of course, this is the Mobula 8 and I've flown it inside and outside more aggressively in my original review, review video. If you would like to see that again, I do have that link down in the video description. So I just pulled out some of the sections of uh, this particular flight. Again, both the Pavo Pico and the Mobula 8, again, are flown on the same day. So we have as close to similar lighting conditions and wind conditions that I could and giving them both an even Steven sort of fair shake as far as doing a comparison. Uh, that's about as best I can do without doing them both at the same time, which having two pilots in the air at the same time just is not feasible and flying two quads at the same time with any sort of real precision and control isn't feasible is either uh, but that is over a minute of that performance footage we'll let this one punch go and then we'll go over to the Pavo Pico all right here's our Pavo Pico and then we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison for this one as well, where I just pull out the things that I do that are about the same and I try to synchronize them. So you can actually compare like the punch out along the chimney line there. You can compare uh, how quickly they go up. Uh, but of course the side-by-side -side views doesn't have flight audio. So note that that Pavo Pico has a little bit of a tune issue or a motor idle issue to where it wobbles when it's at zero throttle sometimes. Doesn't do it all the time. As you saw in that last one, it barely wobbled at all. So sometimes the wobble can be pretty dramatic like that one. And sometimes it can be kind of minor, uh, like the one where I punch from one side of the house to the other. Of course, you have to accept the risk that your O3 is out front, proud and top center, that if you have a vicious crash that the O3 might 
we might have some uh, incredible to saddening uh, damage if you want to fly these quads in this particular way because they're not protected at all. There are some other details that we can go into back at the desk. Uh, I don't want to get too, too deep into them. Uh, again, uh, full review videos are down in the video description. But that is well over a minute and a half on the Pavo Pico. Let's go to the side-by-side -side comparison. And these are the tricks that I just try to pull out in time and show them to you that are very, very similar. And then when I do punch outs or something like that, I try to time them up uh, as far as synchronizing them in the video so that you could see how, you know, how high they go or how they handle stuff up top. Um, they're not perfect, but it's about as close as uh, an amateur like myself can be. Uh, this is not my job. I have to say that all the time. I go to work every day just like anyone else who has a job. And, well, not every day. I have some off days. Okay, so that's all the flight footage I have for you. And I think the thing that I want to uh, mention is one of the things as I put this screenshot up is to keep in mind when you're running a micro and you're running an O3, uh, I stopped this screenshot so that we could take a look at this together to where you know that at 2.8 volts per cell, or at 5.6 volts, uh, this was the last frame recorded on an instance where the VTX went out. This is the last frame recorded. So if I got any below 2.8 volts per cell or 5.6 volts in total from the battery, the VTX is going to shut off. Now, this is only useful as a warning, and, and you know you can't go much further than this. You might be able to go a little bit further, but this is my finding with these two particular quads is that it would stop right here. Like I, I, a few batteries got out of hand on me and then when I tried to fly back, this quad didn't make it all the way back to my, my flying spot as you can see me over there in the background. So uh, something to keep in mind, quality of batteries, the care of the batteries do matter. So if you're flying 2S such as these quads are and your voltage gets down to 5.6 volts, uh, you're gonna lose the VDX uh, in the next moment or two. As far as comparing these, uh, again, these are vastly different. So uh, I think the Mobula 8 is more, they retrofitted a, uh, an O3 on it for the purposes of satisfying customers who want might want a performance whoop or a, uh, a power whoop that has O3 and that you could potentially control with the uh, Radio Control 2. I don't have one of those to test, but you have the S-Bus cable on here. You should be able to set up and configure through Betaflight using the remote control 2 from DJI in order to use it with any O3 air unit quad. So you should be able to use that particular remote. I think that came with the Avata kit, and that's why people are asking about that. But I don't have that kit, and I don't have that remote. So I can't, for certain, test and answer those questions. But so, you know, again, both of them are going to have that O3 air unit up proud. You can buy the Mobula 8 with the O3. Uh, they have a version of that available. You can also get it if you... The light version, if you have your own O3, you're going to put in it. I believe the Pavo Pico, you can only buy it light, so to speak. So you have to add your own. Uh, again, the Pavo Pico has the advantage that you could take off the prop guards and still fly this potentially. So even if your prop guard got damaged, which I do think it would take damage, uh, you can repair it using E6000 or... Uh, welders as I do and, and I've shown a number of times on this uh, channel both frames are going to break but this one I think is going to take a much bigger beating than this one will before it does break the other thing is how the mounts are secured down with the Pavo Pico they just use self-tapping screws to go up through the carbon fiber into the rubber grommets and then up into the uh, frame so it's kind of almost floating so it has more likely that it would have less video vibration in the video but also in my opinion if you have a force and you're flying aggressively and crash this is probably the one that's going to break clean off first and therefore potentially eject if you want to say that term the o3 whereas this uses a hex bolt uh, with a nut Unfortunately, they didn't put any uh, Loctite or any sort of thread locker on the nuts, so that's something we need to do. Uh, much more substantial sort of mount. I think it would probably hold up a little bit better than the super small and super light Pavo Pico, but that's to be expected. If you just look at the designs, they're grossly different. More substantial generally will take more uh, abuse, but it's something to keep in mind. I don't think there's a clear winner. I think you have to pick the style that you're going for. I think if you want that slow, cruisy sort of flight, uh, one that I will say fights win better is the Pavo Pico. I'm sure there's a limit to that, but 
when I flew the Mobile 8 versus the Pablo Pico in the same sort of 7 mile an hour winds that you saw in this video, I felt it was easier for the Pablo Pico just to smoothly cut through it. That's not flying aggressively. That's just flying normally, slowly, cutting through that wind. Whereas I felt like you were kind of pushing the Mobula 8 through the wind, but it's got that grunt and force with a larger motor and larger props that it can do that fairly re readily. But I still, if you're flying through wind, I think this one is going to cut through it a little bit better. Plus it has that advantage of being able to take off to a degree, be able to take off the prop protection and just fly it with the carbon fiber. I mean, it's, it's sketchy, but you could do it with a little minor DIY stuff. Whereas this one, prop protection is going to be required okay i've gone on far too long with this video hopefully the flight sections of this video as well as the discussions have helped you further along if you were on the fence about which one to buy and if you are looking to buy i'll put links to wherever i can find these available and then you can use those links if you choose to they're probably 50 50 affiliate and non-affiliate links i really don't go after affiliates i don't ask companies for affiliates they usually have come to me over the years and i'm like well sure whatever uh so you can use those links if you want to i appreciate that i appreciate the sentiment but if you don't like that sort of idea I'm fine with that. I appreciate you stopping by the channel and giving the video a watch anyways. Uh, just use your Google Foo to find one if you do want one on your own. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. I think I may have spit on the camera there at the end.